A lot of times people think of time management, most everybody's inefficient and disorganized or overwhelming themselves with time. They say, I don't have enough time. Yeah. But the real shift in thinking about time management is don't take all the time that you think you don't have and all the things you have to do and try to put them into blocks or boxes. Instead say, it's my relationship with time that needs to change. If you tell yourself, I don't have two minutes to slow down, to perform better, this is a mindset problem, not a time problem. Mm -hmm. And I tell people like, so you want to spend your whole day running around, not getting results you want, feeling anxious and performing poorly? Or do you want to trust me and take two to three minutes and do what I'm saying, try what I'm giving you? And you go, I feel so much better. And now you're going to perform way better. So instead of 12 hours of anxiety, you spend two hours and accomplish this goal. Hey there, friends. It's Anya Smith here. And today's episode is going to light a fire under your ambition. Imagine having the keys to unlocking peak performance, make decisions that lead you straight to success, and find joy in every step of your journey. Our guest is none other than the powerhouse behind the Ideal You coaching technique and the Action Mastery coaching system. He has been voted number one top business coach of 2023 by Apple News and has repeatedly been recognized as the number one business and life coach in Las Vegas. His insights have also illuminated the screens in the field of the biology and the gratitude experiment. With so much to learn, I'm thrilled for the opportunity to speak to Brett Bauman today. Welcome, Brett. So grateful to have you here. Anya, thank you so much. Really a pleasure to be with you. Congratulations on everything you're doing and your success. You as well. You as well. There's so much to talk about. And before we dive in, I want to mention the a common buzzword that I think, I think there's a common buzzword around this topic, which is like mindset. You know, how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself between the buzzword and what actually works to help us on this growth journey? Yeah, it's funny you say that on you because, uh, you know, doing this as long as I've done 24 years now, there's a lot of buzzwords. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of like everybody tells everybody, I love you. I love you now to become so numbed out, right? You know, mindset, coaching, all these things. So really what I do to differentiate, number one, people come to me through so many different doorways. I'm like, you can call me whatever you want. Counselor, coach, business coach, life coach, therapist, exactly. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to help you. But so really what I look at and what I consider myself, because I think it identifies it clearly to people, is I'm a peak performance coach. And what I mean by that is, what are you best at? Like, how do I get you to your peak, whether it's in your career, your relationships, your health and fitness, I want to help you chart a course to be your best, to be able to not only get there, but to measure it yourself so that you can have a routine, a strategy that you can say, oh, I'm off. That's okay. I learned this. I can go back and do step one, two, three, and get right back on track. It's not just about cheerleading and motivating you to feel better. It's about actually having tools and disciplines that measure your success and can repeat it. Wow. I love that. And because all of us are performing, right? Whether we, we think that performance is something that happens on the sports fields, but really in life, we're all performing. We all have goals. And so if somebody is saying like, okay, I get that, but how, um, how can somebody start? So they may be like, okay, I'm not where I want to be. How do I aspire to have this peak performance? Yeah. You know, I think the first thing, the most important thing, obviously when people start, we're going through a lot of emotional stress, right? So there's a couple different ways you can start. Number one really is you got to get yourself some hope. You got to get to a place where you're feeling better about yourself. So I do a lot of techniques with meditation and breath work now, and I teach people simple, simple, easily digestible techniques that you can do that make you feel better. Because if you can't get out of the pain, if you can't get yourself to where you're feeling hopeful and have a clear mind, you're not going to make the progress you want. So the first thing is getting to a place where you're calm and, and your stress levels are low. I do this little technique with people called take five and come back better. And I teach them this as a discipline. It's really simple because when you do this, what you do is when you feel overwhelmed, whether you're frustrated with yourself and have a negative health, uh, negative, you know, self-talk or whether you're talking with someone else, an employee or a loved one, when you realize you're not being the person you want to be step away and take five, get out of the environment. You got to change the environment, go someplace and just breathe for a couple minutes. You don't have to know a special breathing technique just calm your breathing down. You'll realize your breathing is the key to everything. Your breathing's off, you're being mm -hmm. panicked and stressed. And when you calm your breathing, it resets everything inside your body, including your parasympathetic, which reduces your adrenaline and your cortisol and makes you relaxed. And your mind clears. Like people say, mm -hmm. let me get my head straight, give me a moment. So you take five, you breathe. And once you finish that breathing technique, you ask yourself, how is this helping me? And what am I supposed to learn from this experience? And what happens is it not only helps you calm down, but it changes your mind from being in an anxious mindset to moving into objective mindset where now you have a clear action step to take. 
And that behavior starts to get you go, wow, you know what? That was really simple. I just did a little breathing. I calmed myself down and I asked myself, what am I supposed to learn from this? And now I have an action item. And all of a sudden you can start making progress. And that's a great way to start. What I love about this is I can hear people saying, well, stress, how do I, how do I avoid stress? I'm like, I'm running. How do I find even those five minutes? But to your point, I think if we really start saying that I am important enough to invest five minutes in the situation makes a big difference. I've noticed for myself, like I, I notice more when I bubble up, like we you know when you're just like, ah, your body starts tensing up and just even the attention, if you don't have five minutes, but you just start yeah. paying attention to yourself in those, com like I used to be so prideful of like, oh, I can handle the stress, bring yeah. it on. Let's see how tense my body can. <laughs> <laughs> and this is so powerful. Like our breath really dictates everything. And if we just start spending a little bit more time on that connection, big things can happen. The other thing too, Anya, that's so important, you know, talking about breath and time management. A lot of times people think of time management. Most everybody's inefficient and disorganized or overwhelming themselves with time. They say, yeah. I don't have enough time. Yeah. But the real shift in thinking about time management is don't take all the time that you think you don't have and all the things you have to do and try to put them into blocks or boxes. Instead say, it's my relationship with time that needs to change. Mm -hmm. If you tell yourself, I don't have two minutes to slow down, to perform better. This is a mindset problem, not a time problem. Mm -hmm. And I tell people like, so you want to spend your whole day running around, not getting results you want, feeling anxious and performing poorly, or do you want to trust me and take two to three minutes and do what I'm saying, try what I'm giving you. And you go, I feel so much better. And now you're going to perform way better. So instead of 12 hours of anxiety, you spend two hours and accomplish this goal without mm -hmm. collateral damage. And so it's a shift. And like you said, the breath as well. A lot of people think that they breathe anxious or heavy because of the way they're thinking. And it's not, it's the reverse. Yeah. The way you breathe causes you to think and feel a certain way. So when you learn how to manage your breath, you manage your thinking and that's the trick. Otherwise it is difficult. If your mind is really busy and you're going crazy, it's hard to sit down and meditate. Of course your mind's too yeah. busy, but if you breathe and calm down, your mind calms and you go, now I can actually take a moment and think clearly. So it's these little yeah. tiny shifts that make dramatic changes in our lives. Yeah. It's beautiful because it talks to the inner and outer process that we have. Like the success isn't just like this external thing that happens when we chase it. It starts from within. And I think that's where you and I really connected around this process. And you're just very authentic about it. And it reminds me one thing that's been big for me around like this um, approach to time is instead of saying, I'm so busy, I tell myself, I have all the time I need. Exactly. I have all the time I need. And whenever I'm starting to rush, I'm like, I have all the time I need. Yeah. And I'm like, and I also think I could tell myself, I'm like, choose the right weapon. Mm. You know, if you're going into battle for the day, choose the right weapon. I make this joke, but it's, it's really truthful. It's like every different uh, attitude we have is a different version of ourselves. The angry version of Brett is different than the happy version of Brett or the sad version of Brett. So most of us wake up and we're angry, we're frustrated, we're anxious. And that's the Anya or the breath that goes out. This is the super anxious, stressed out Anya that's going out today. Mm -hmm. Would you ever hire that person in your right thinking mind to do anything for you? Never. So then we go out in the world and think, I don't have enough time. I'm getting things wrong. I can't. I'm like, that's because you got the wrong person for the job. So mm -hmm. breathe again, take a moment, come back and say, how do I get the breath that I want to be here doing this today? How do I, how do I hire the Anya I want? and go, that's the weapon I need to be using is the Anya that is focused and centered and grounded and passionate and not the one that's fearful and doubtful and anxious because all you're doing is creating a world that that person would create, which is not the world you want to be living in. <laughs> yeah. That's so beautifully put. And can it be fully transparent? One thing that intimidates me about breath work, I know it's powerful, but it aligns to that intimidation that I have sometimes with meditation where when I'm like, okay, well, I need to be constantly present with my breath, you know, and, and it eludes me. And I come back to what advice would you have for somebody who's like, I want to be using breath work, but I'm intimidated by just how vast that seems. I like, can be constantly paying to your breath. How do you yeah. start? Great, great question. So, and the nice thing is there's really simple ways and simple things I've established for people to move into this. You don't have to be doing it all the time, but a really great practice that I do. So we all have smartphones now inside oh, yeah. your smartphone. We have like, you know, the, the, the calendar, sorry, the clock where you can set timers and things like that. So I have a reminder in my phone. I get up and do a morning routine every morning. When I finish that morning routine, I have a reminder that says, check your breath. And I turn it on and I set it for four hours later in the day. So four hours later in the day, what I do is it goes off. It's like, no matter what I'm doing, when it goes off, I stop for a second 
and I just observe how I'm breathing. Most of us, like I'll have the clients do this all the time and say, yeah, I did it the first time. And I was so anxious. I was so busy. My mind was all over, but it stopped me. And it said, you first check your breath and then you stop for a minute and do breathing. Like I said, just do a minute or two. Just let me calm my breathing. And you just become consciously aware of it and then go back to your day. But you set the alarm again for four hours later and you just keep doing this. So you do it maybe two, three times a day. And after three or four days of doing it, you go, I'm already feeling different. I'm not paying attention to it consciously throughout the day. But those moments of stopping and saying, I mean, how many times do we stop a day and say, hey, how am I doing? It's yeah. been six hours. I'm having a crazy day. How am I doing? Should I be doing what I'm doing? We don't. But when you check in and say, let me make a little conscious adjustment. Maybe I'm not focused on the right activity. Maybe I've got a bad attitude. Maybe I need to slow down. And you get a moment to reset. All sports teams have a huddle. They have breaks. They do things where they go, okay, come back and collect your mindset. You don't just play a game forever nonstop. You do a little bit and you take a break, you do a little bit and take a little break. There's timeouts and whatever. We have to have a timeout in life. And if you don't, you never get to check your performance. And so yeah. this becomes a habit and discipline. And very quickly you go, every time I stop, I feel better and I come back better. And after two or three days, you go, you know what? This you're, The cool thing about our unconscious mind is it wants to do the best for you. It has a blueprint. Yeah. Of, of, of perfect health for you, but we're fighting it. But once you start, once it starts to pick up that something works, it adapts that behavior. And so two or three days in, you go, you know what? I'm going to start paying more attention to my breath. And you didn't have to work harder. Your body will do it for you. That's, that's brilliant. I, I love that. It comes a sense like where we stop usually when we're like, I just can't handle it anymore. Yeah, over <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where did I go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and this is so simple. So if you have a smartphone, which I'm sure is probably like a couple of feet away from you right now, <laughs> go to it right now, set a four hour reminder if it works with your sleep schedule and just try that. Like these are such simple things that you can start thinking about it because then your mind looks for the things that it likes, right? Yeah. Imagine how much more rewarding this is than checking a social post. It doesn't do anything for your life. It's just like, here's just a couple of minutes that will enrich your life and build this powerful habit. And Brett, you are just no stranger to the space of peak performance. What are maybe the most common barriers to success around this maybe inner work that you found and how have, what would you recommend people to do around those? You know, the number one is the time management. You know, people say, I don't have time for this. It's funny because a client will start with me and I always say, what would make our relationship successful for you? How will you measure success or getting where you want to go? And they'll tell me, oh, you know, all these things they want, like, I don't like my career. I'm unhappy. I'm unhealthy. All this stuff. And I say, great, let's start with two minutes of meditation. Like, I don't have time for it. <laughs> like, just... They're like, let's tell me, I don't, I don't think I can... if I, this doesn't work, I don't think I can go on. But yet they still fight that pattern. So the first thing is, is, you know, making time for the things because you will become way more efficient. I mean, within seven days, your performance is going to improve so much that you're going to dramatically see a change in your emotional intelligence, the way you respond to stress. Um, your, uh, your health, the way you feel, the way you sleep. So number one is that time management. Number two is discipline. Biggest thing is discipline. It's hard for people to get in the habit of doing something. And so, but like I said, these little techniques I give people, it's like, look, I'm not expecting you to say, you should be doing these things every day for your life, for the rest of your life. You should be, yes. But I'm not asking you to start day one and do that. All I'm saying is start adding a little bit, like a little bit of flavor to your life. Add this little bit of this thing. Maybe once today, put that thing in there and just check your breath. Maybe one time this week when you're stressed, step aside and do the take five and think about it and ask yourself how that's helping you. And you'll go, you know what? That was probably the best part of my day or the best part of my week. And then all of a sudden you go, maybe I'll try it more. I'm not saying get to the gym every day and spend eight hours. I'm saying go once. And all of a sudden with these techniques, you'll start believing. So for me, it's getting over that hump and giving you a taste of the medicine. And then you go, okay, I believe. Because I think most of us don't believe it can work for us. They think, yeah, sure, it helped you on your breath, but that's not going to work for me. And I'm so passionate about helping people understand that you really can transform your life. Another buzzword, unfortunately, gets thrown around. I don't like that it gets thrown around because I really do work with people and transform them. I won't say it if I don't mean it, but you really can make these dramatic changes if you have the right formula and the right guidance. Absolutely. One thing that reminds me is a habit stacking. So in your analogy of like going to the gym, maybe you start just doing something when you're, you go out the door every day. Maybe you start putting something by that door. So you just have like, it makes it that, that much easier. So you, you, we all do something maybe like brushing your teeth, hopefully like do something <laughs> around things you do every day and just add like one little thing that you want to do to it, whether it could be like this reminder or just catching your breath, 
again, make it super easy. One thing that has also been on my heart for full transparency is I realized that what was missing in my drive for success was joy. You know what I mean? Like we have this element of like, I'm going to be getting to this place where I'm successful, but I realize I'm not joyful right now. Mm-hmm. And I had this, like for me now, I'm realizing I am worthy of enjoying now. Like that to me is success is when your life right now has joy in it. And yeah. it's been profound because again, it's completely against everything that I thought success was before. And just now I'm like, I'm just enjoying life. Cause if I, even when I'm successful, I am in, in fact enjoying life. So, and I realized, um, this is maybe found like when I'm, when I'm not enjoying life, I'm telling myself I'm not successful. I'm telling myself I am not successful right now. So if you are in the moment where you want to be successful, you're pushing it away by imagining what it would be like, unless you're living it right now, how you'd feel to be successful. If that makes sense. Saying, yeah. There's a great <laughs> saying in a mantra that I live by that. I love, I heard many years ago. I think this was from Robert on shark tank. Hmm. Um, but he said, as you build it, so shall it live. Hmm. And. What that means to me is so much, so much, so much deeper, so much more depth that understanding. What it is, is if you're stressed and if you're upset and angry and you're going out and you're building something, whether it's your health, your life, your relationship, your career, your you know clients, whatever it is, that's how you're building it. I'm building anxiety and stress and doubt into it. How could it be something else? That's the ingredients. Like you're cooking with those ingredients. So you have to cook with the ingredients you want to taste in life. And so you have to get to a place of having the joy or the passion, knowing like what I put into it is what I will get out of it. And I know people can say, well, that's easy to say when you're happy or on that side of it. That's why I do the two things. My, my coaching is focused on two things, helping you create what the ideal you is and discovering your passions because you have to have, why am I doing this? What's out there? What am I working towards? What are the unconscious drivers that fulfill me? And it's not just like, oh, I'm passionate about playing the guitar. Why do you play the guitar? How do you play the guitar? When do you have to play it? Who's your audience? What's the music you play? When you get very specific and granular, you know exactly how to fulfill it and why you're not feeling fulfilled because something specific about that bucket is not being filled. And then the peak performance is how you show up each day to get there. Because if you don't show up as the best version of you, it's going to take you longer to get there. Or you go off on a branch instead of going up the tree. And so it's all about meeting that. Like, here's my vision. And I show up my best each day, knowing that I'm building inspiration. I'm building momentum. I'm building health and, you know, prosperity for the future. So well put. You know, one thing that also makes me think is that when people think that, oh, well, if I'm enjoying the moment, then I'm going to be like losing all my traction. Like I'm going to become soft. Here I am compassionate and enjoying life. Like, what am I going to achieve then? And to that, I've actually found like it makes you more resilient. When you're grinding it out, thinking, I'm just going to overpower it, like next promotion, then next promotion, next goal. Then like, finally, when I get there, like that actually is a very (laughs) unhealthy way to achieve anything. When you're enjoying the process, when you're being kind to yourself, when you're being just um, compassionate to every challenge, you know, but you're just remembering what matters in the moment, then you become really resilient because you like that step. Every step you're you're doing with joy, like I want to do more of this, no matter how long it takes, I'm in it. Like I'm going to do it because I'm just enjoying the ride. So I think that's something very powerful. Mm -hmm. I also say it's it's very attractive on you. Like, you know, people talk about law of attraction. For me, the most important thing about law of attraction is being attractive. And what I mean by that is when you see somebody that is, you know, so you see like a high powered person working and they're just, you know, cutthroat and razor sharp and going all the time and busy and yelling at people. Do you think, I really want to work with that person? (laughs) Them. No. Or if somebody's depressed and complaining now, you're like, I'm trying to stay away. Unfortunately, you stick away from people like that. But when you see somebody that's moving along, getting things done, happy, calm, peaceful, their energy is nice. They're smiling. They're joyful. They're kind. You're like, I want to spend time with them. Yeah. And so when you show up as the best version of yourself, when you use that stuff, what happens is people go, how can I help you? How can I support you? Of course, you have a problem. Of course, I'll listen, you know, but nobody wants to hear the person that's complaining all the time and nobody wants to be yelled at or barked at. So we don't realize that how you're behaving, would you want to work with yourself? Would you want to be managed by yourself? Would you want to be married to yourself? And so try to be, have, you know, a positive objective awareness of your experience and do your best to be the best version of you. I say, never, never look at something negatively. It's always opportunity for growth. And that's beautiful. It means you're already here and succeeding. And there's even more you can do to be even better, more you can do to be more abundant or more peaceful, right? And speaking to somebody, maybe listen, this sounds all nice, but let's talk about real stuff. Um, can you maybe share a story where somebody came to you? Maybe they weren't feeling super like, oh, breath is going to change my life. Or, oh, this inner work is going to leave me success. But, you know, I've seen breath. I've seen his credentials. I'm just going to give it a go. But can you maybe share a story of success where somebody wasn't 
knowing or trusting all of this and what impact has had by just going on it. Yeah, absolutely. I've had as many as I would say probably 80% of my clients, they come to me and they tell me they don't have time to do this stuff. They're like, look, I want to work with you. I don't have time on my schedule. So they're like almost uncoachable at first because they're like not following things, don't have the time. Um, they're like, look, I've meditated in the past and meditation doesn't work for me. I've tried. It doesn't work. Um, so therefore breath works out because you're basically just, <laughs> they're just nixing all that. And they're like, look, I want you to help me do this stuff. I'm like, you know, look, you got to surrender to the process. Number one, what you're doing and you're thinking those people, what they're doing is you're thinking that everything has to be a certain way and that you know everything. And it's like, if you knew it all, then why aren't you doing it the way you want to do it? So you got to be open to trying something new. And so the quick shift, like I said, I give people a couple things to start with, but really something that I tell people about meditation, because here's the first thing, there's a lot of misnomers, a lot of everything becomes so popular that you get generic information. You're not guided to something that really works. I've done a lot of research into what really works and like meditation. Most people say it's so hard for me. I sit down, I can't quiet my mind. I can't find that time to be peaceful. And I'm like, well, listen, there's two things you're doing incorrectly right away. Number one, you do have the time because you always have the time to do better. Because when I show you what you're going to do, we're going to go through it very quickly, you're going to perform better. So if something that took you eight hours to do, it will take you four hours to do, mm -hmm. guaranteed. And you will be like, wow. You're also, because the thing is you're approaching with a clear mindset. We're either in an emotional stress mindset or in a clear creative mindset. The clear creative gets things done. It doesn't make more damage. So number one, you're going to get more momentum to finish. But the other thing is, is by understanding that number one, you're not supposed to quiet your mind. You're not supposed to turn your mind off. It never does that. What you're supposed to do is understand it better. Our mind is always working. It's brilliant. And so when I teach people to meditate, I'm like, you're not supposed to sit down. There are monks that spend 30 and 40 years up in a temple and a vow of silence trying to have one minute of transcendence. And you think you're supposed to sit down and do it in your busy, hectic life immediately. I'm like, come on. What you're supposed to do is sit down and allow your mind to process. I tell people, think about your smartphone, think about your computer. When it says, I got to do an update, your phone doesn't say, please open 5,000 apps and go crazy on Instagram right now while I'm doing an update. It says, plug me into the wall overnight and leave me alone. And so that's what your mind needs to do, but you have to be there because you're part of it. So you sit down to meditate and rather than thinking your mind's going to quiet, what I tell people to do is become the observer of your experience. Imagine sitting down in a movie theater and all your thoughts are like trailers on the screen and you just watch them. You don't have to engage. You shouldn't engage with them. Let them happen. Like, oh, I got to do this. Here's this busy thought. I got to call dad, crazy thing. And just notice what's happening. And before you know it, all of a sudden you go, wow, that was fascinating. Like in the past, I would have felt like I needed to do something, answer, engage every one of those thoughts. And you do not. But what's cool about meditation is and why we need this we move through the different brain waves. This is biological. This is not some woo woo. You know, we're in alpha beta right now talking to each other. You got to get down into delta and theta when you want to process thoughts. And so you have to upgrade your thinking. Most people never sleep or rest. So you never update your system. So the things you learn don't integrate. So you make the same repeated patterns and problems. You're not reducing your stress and you're not organizing your thoughts. When you allow your mind to do this through sitting and observing it, it does the work for you. You don't have to do anything. Our unconscious mind is also very small, right? Mm -hmm. Like five to seven bits of information at a time versus millions and billions of bits. So trust the team that's back there in the unconscious mind and watch them go to work. And you mm -hmm. spend two, three, five, 10 minutes. And all of a sudden you go, I feel clear because they took, they did the job of getting the garbage mm -hmm. out of the way and bringing you clarity and saying, now here are the things that are important to focus on. And that's all meditation is, is letting your unconscious mind do its work. It's like your heartbeat. You don't get to get in there and try to make your heart beat. You can sit here right now and I can be present and notice my heart beating and my body taking care of it. That's what your mind needs, but we don't give it the break. My, my challenge to everybody listening is to charge yourself more, at least as much as your phone. Exactly. <laughs> Every time you look at your phone now, think about how often am I charging myself and should I close off some of those 1,000 tabs that I've opened or apps to yeah. recover for myself? That's a beautiful analogy. On you too, like how inherent, like, when we take time to breathe, just even if you take a minute right now and you just take a couple of breaths and just you do that two or three times, everything else shifts somehow. You don't have to have the answers, but all of a sudden you're like, okay, what I was dealing with is maybe it's okay. I can step back. Maybe I have a second more. Maybe I was thinking about it. There's another way to look at it. And so when you do this stuff, these habits, doing a little breathing, doing a little meditation before you open your phone and do things, you go, maybe I don't want to go into my Instagram today and scroll. Yeah. 
maybe there's something better I can do. Maybe I'll take a walk with my dog or maybe I'll just get out in the sun. And it's incredible. You don't have to have somebody teaching you. There's no PhD you have to have. It's inherent, but we don't slow down. So we don't have a chance for that ever to happen for us. Yeah. It makes me think, you know, one thing I think about is like, we, I really wanted to trust my intuition. And I've read other people. The other thing too, on you that's so important, you're talking about breath and time think, management. Starting with your breath is a, a really times powerful tool because time most about everybody's about it, inefficient, you are not consciously thinking about breathing. And yet that's what's keeping you alive. Time, right? If you have to consciously think about breathing, you would die. So quickly, oh, forgot. Don't take all the time that you think you don't have and all the things you have to do. When you embrace your breathing, you embrace this relationship with yourself and like there's some higher wisdom, you know, that, you know, keeping you alive without you aware if you tell you yourself, aware of it. And so there's kind of this trust have that happens that there's trust in your intuition in yourself and you listening outside of all the noise this is a that you can do something problem, that aligns what you really problem. want to do versus just and following I tell people, the like, stimuli so you spend your whole day running you. around not getting results you want process. feeling anxious and another thing for me you kind of mentioned this earlier or do you want to trust me and take two to three minutes and do what I'm saying we talked a lot about try what I'm giving you right like breathing and Meditation, I feel so much like better. And now you're going to perform way better. So instead of 12 hours like, of anxiety, I don't, anxiety, do I don't believe you in that. Here's hours really simple thing for this goal. We overwhelm our minds with tasks. I could go to almost every single person, mm -hmm. nine out of 10, I can almost guarantee and say, what's your task list for today? And it's either going to be zero. I don't know what I'm doing, or it's going to be 50 things. And it's been growing every day. Yeah. And here's an extremely powerful and very simple thing every single person can do. And I, I guarantee you absolutely this will work for you. Ask yourself right now, what is the most important thing I should be doing? Most important thing I should be doing that's either for my health, because like I need something because like I'm I have a client I talked to this morning and he's going through some serious health things and he's got business and kids and stuff. And he was focusing so much on the family. I said, look, you're an amazing dad and a great business person. I said, but right now, if you die, you're not going to be here for them. So your health is number one. You got to take care of your health right now. So I gave him some instructions, some health things to do today at another client that has been confused on motivation, trying to figure out, cause I have a lot of projects. I said, what is the one most important thing that'll make the biggest dramatic impact in your mm -hmm. life right now? And so one thing, so look at your list and say, is running and grabbing the groceries the most important thing? Is, mm -hmm. is picking up laundry the most important thing? Is like, no, like, what is the thing? Like right now I need to make this one call. They could close this client that'll bring me a thousand dollars and pay my mortgage this month. Done. I need to check with my mom that's sick at the hospital. There's mm -hmm. one thing. Do one thing at a time. We really don't multitask. We multi-stress. We think right. we're tasking, we're not. We're fractioning our focus. So just choose one thing and don't worry about anything else. Be present. Mm -hmm. That's the other problem is we're never present in the moment because we're always worrying about the next thing we're doing or fretting over something we just did. So say, what's the most important thing I can do? And do your best at staying in the moment of doing that. And all of a sudden you get it done. It changes your thinking. You're performing better and you go, wow. Now I'll take the next task yeah. and the next, that's why I say like those statements, put one foot in front of the other. They don't say, keep putting both feet on top of each other and <laughs> tripping, which we do in life. Right. Yeah. And, and I think we logically, even if we just give it a moment of reflection, we sense that weight. So if we, if we have this to-do list and we're doing one thing, we carry the weight of the 50 other things and that feels so much heavier. So if you just even think about this idea that Brett is proposing, just, just feel what, what comes up for you. Does that feel lighter? And if it does, try it out. I'm definitely going to uh, try it out for myself. But we've talked so much about what you've done for others. I'm curious about your journey. Hmm. Like you, you obviously know your stuff. You're passionate about it. How the heck did you find yourself un undertaking this path? It's so different from traditional success tactics and hacks. And it's honestly very different than traditional coaching and therapy. I'm so proud of it. Like, you know, it's like it's it's I've. So let me back up and say this. So number one, the reason that I, there's two main reasons why I am who I am. And I'm so grateful for it. I have no ego. This has nothing to do with me. I'm so yeah. grateful. I feel so blessed to have my life. I can't believe I get to do this each day. I really, every day, I'm like, how am I still doing this? But um, number one, my parents are amazing. They're my best friends. I was blessed. God gave me the most incredible family. They've always supported me. They've guided me. They gave me a voice. They listened to me and they gave me confidence. They always said, try everything once, go for it. Don't hurt yourself make good decisions. And when something would happen, they'd sit down and say, let's talk about it. And we would talk through things. So it helped me be uh, an emotionally intelligent and have a lot of strength and communication to feel it was okay. And you can make mistakes. It's okay to make a mistake. That's how you grow and learn. So that's massive. And I really feel for most people because most people don't get that. You know, talent is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. And I was blessed with opportunity. Beyond that, I believe God put me here to do this. I'm a very faithful, spiritual person. And the more I've leaned into that, the more my life has opened up to this. 
I've been doing this 24 years. And before that, I still managed people and did things like that. I just didn't know who I was yet in this coach role. But I've, I've had a avid pursuit of knowledge. I never stop learning. I always keep learning. I'm learning, you know, I've studied in school. I take trainings. I'm, I'm reading books. I'm always in some new program doing something. And so that's been my path to get there. I've, it's helped me become, uh, lose my fear. I'm fearless about things other than losing family members, which is painful. Um, you know, never want to lose them. I don't really have fears of other things because of this drive, this faith I have that I'm where I'm supposed to be and the mm -hmm. support of loved ones. And so I've just continued to follow the path and, I really learned that in the past eight to 10 years, I've really embraced this understanding of surrender. And it happened through leaning more into my faith and also experiencing what was happening with my clients. Clients would come to me and I've always had a spirituality and I've developed it more learning about Buddhism and Christianity and then shamanism and a lot of different things. But I wasn't always comfortable to feel like I could share it with everybody. I felt like we shouldn't talk about this. I'm dealing with high performing executive. Yeah. Don't talk about this. <laughs> but then they would come to me and they'd have everything you'd want in the world on paper and felt lost and empty without passion. And I started to realize what it was, was they didn't have a connection to a higher calling that to them, there was no accountability. And that's what spirituality is to me. It's not about being yeah. Catholic or Christian or Buddhist. Anything. What it is to me is that we're all one, that there is something divine to our lives. There's a power that makes this beautiful world. Yeah. And if you have no one that holds you accountable when you're alone, that's scary. Like who is, who is telling you, who's guiding you and making you say, I want to choose to be a good person. I'm not going to kill. I'm not going to chill. I'm not, I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to cheat. That to me comes from accountability, from a higher purpose and a yeah. connection. And then once you embrace that, you start to listen to that small, still voice and it starts to guide you. And it starts to say, man, I've had great opportunities come up. And it was like, that's not the right one. I'm like, I want to take it, but I didn't. Or I had something not work out. And instead of forcing it, I'm like, I'm going to trust you, God. I, I know mm -hmm. that if this doesn't work, there's something better. And you have to faith. It's that faith fall big time. And then all of a sudden it turns out. And so that's really what's helped bring me here. And that's why I also feel so called to share this with other people, because I've been so blessed that I'm going to do the work every day to continue to give my gratitude and continue to open doors for others. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, what's, what's funny, I looked at your profile and sometimes it's so easy to have a little bit of that, um, you know, distrust when you see somebody and you see that they're super successful, you know, like doing all stuff like, Oh, are they for real? And the moment we talked, I just knew you were for real. You know, like the moment we call even before this um, happening and honestly, it gives me so much comfort and so much heart alignment because I'm also new. This podcast is new. This whole endeavor is new for my life and it's changed my life. And there's been a lot of work that's happening around trusting my heart, trusting mm -hmm. my purpose. And just, again, the reason I believe in it so much is like these discussions. I hope more people see it and see that this, helps like they feel relatable examples of other people doing it me imperfectly doing it. and say like, hey i can relate to this experience i can also find this within myself i can cultivate that relation for myself and uh, the trust like what's funny it reminds me of brene brown i was reading her book raising Stri rising strongly if i'm butchering up forgive me but she was saying that in the point where you're in the arena head down like those are the points where we all have to go through spirituality like she, that's the common element. Like no matter what your religion is, I'm not religious. I'm again, I have my own beliefs, but like mm -hmm. everybody who has those points, like they think of spirituality as a common way to get through it because yes. you have to say like, what's inside of me? Um, what do I value? What's kind of the core of all that? It doesn't matter what you get to, to me, it's love. To me, the essential principle is like exactly. love is universal. Exactly. And that's what guides me. We're all one. We're all, and that's me too. Like spirituality. I always say, number one, I always say, Always to be open to choosing the option yeah. that provides you with the best opportunity for success. So why not try out spirituality? By spirituality, yeah. I don't mean drive to a church and go someplace. I mean, believe that love is the guiding power. Be kind to others. We are connected in one. When you empathize with others, when you spend time trying to help others, when I have a problem, the number one thing I do is go help someone else. I go help someone else and things start to work out. Not only do I feel better and change who I am, but resources and things start aligning in my life. That needs to be instead of being problematic and stuck in it because being overwhelmed won't work but yeah. believe in love believe in kindness believe that there's a reason for you you're valuable here and yeah. believe that when you just let go a little bit and let go i'm not saying like it's inactivity it's stop forcing it you can yeah. tell what something's being forced when you're in a relationship and it's not working out you keep pushing and pushing and pushing the person to love yeah. you or trying to be this person or change them or i'm trying to get this project to go through and everyone keeps telling me no 
I have a client that I'm working with recently that's doing this huge project and they mm -hmm. kept trying to get money for the project and pushing and pushing all these people to get financing yeah. and they couldn't get the financing like five, six people they talked to. I said, look, this isn't a failure. This is a setup. I said, yeah. it's showing you there's something right now that you don't know that you need to learn because you're not ready for it. And they mm -hmm. went back and looked at their executive summary and realized there were some problems in there where they didn't have the financials correct. Yeah. And before they even went to the person that was there, so they fixed it got the person for the funding right afterward. I said, wow, this is an opportunity. I was like, it's just showing you're not ready yet. Just embrace it and understand that there's surrender. Surrender is yeah. maybe there's something to learn. Maybe there's something to do before you take that step. And it doesn't mean you're cursed. It means yeah. trust, trust yeah. in the process, keep the focus and persist, but be flexible. Absolutely. I like to ask like, how they say like, um, there's a gift in every, like in every storm, there's a gift or in every darkness, there's a gift. And sometimes I try to say, what is the gift of this moment? When things suck, yes. and I'm not saying like things are going to be perfect. I'm a mom with three boys. Th mm -hmm. Shit hits the fan. Um, <laughs> but you know, like you have to like just that there's a gift. And like if you question it that way, that makes you more resilient. And if I can just share one more example, like um, a couple weekends ago, we went to Vancouver, uh, Canada with my three boys. And nice. as we were getting into the Airbnb, like we live on a nine acre farm, so a very different environment. Um, we were offloading, and then we realized like my almost two year old was missing. Oh. And like we couldn't find him. And, um, for like the two worst minutes of my life, like I didn't know where he was. Oh man. And here we are on Vancouver, like there's, there's busy streets and it's the most helpless moment I've had in my life. And I'm not comparing it with anybody, but in the moment, like, all I could do is just like surrender and just pray yeah. that something would happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, sorry. Um, and so we, uh, a neighbor came out on her phone and she was talking to her husband and he found him oh. three blocks away. And so there's moments where, um, sorry. Yeah, no, there's, th there's moments where like you just have to surrender and like that experience like and I'm I'm very grateful they happened for the best but there's moments that you can't control and learning to trust yourself and just like surrender like things are going to happen how they hand um and like th that was a beautiful moment for me like I couldn't do anything but I just trusted and things worked out and it may not always be the case but sometimes you can't control everything and you have to surrender and that's the only way to live is like find that balance of trust and surrender and enjoying the present that we do have to cherish um, and that's life. I'm so glad that worked out for you. I'm sorry. And, and listen, here's the thing too, you know, yeah. all we can control, all you can yeah. control in the universe is your focus and your emotions. And if we are, like I was saying earlier, if you're panicked, if you're stressed, if you're overwhelmed, you're not making the best decisions. The Anya that's overwhelmed and stressed and panicking is not going to think straight. It's like, yeah. that's why they hire and train certain people to be EMTs and doctors and nurses yeah. and people in like our armed forces. They have to get trained to be like, Hey, when something hits the fan, when a child's missing, when there's an emergency, when a building collapses, when something school shooting, you can't overwhelm what you have to go. What do I have to do? I got to get into that mindset, be the best version of me right now. I have to be prepared at my peak to handle this. And you can't do that by being overwhelmed. It's of course, and it's nothing to take it away. We have the experience. We're human. That's what's beautiful yeah. about us. But we have to have the strength and the discipline. That's why these things we're talking about, they're not just about making it through the days. They're about being there in the worst times for the people you love and for yourself so you can go, Hold on. I got to pull it together. I know what to do. I can breathe. I'm here. I'm going to handle this. You know, I'll say um, on that, Anya, mm -hmm. my whole life, I'm like I said, I'm so blessed with my family. They're incredible. My mom and dad are incredible. My grandmother on my mom's side, my, my, all, all my grandparents, my grandmother on my mom's side was my best, one of my best friends. Her name was Betty. She was the most beautiful angel person in the world. And um, I used to say when I was a kid, I'd never want to live in a planet where she wasn't at. I was like, when mm -hmm. she's gone, I don't know if I want to live on that planet. And then she passed away like four years ago. Actually, my brother passed away in an accident four years ago on Easter. And then she passed away a couple months later. Yeah, I choked up myself. And uh, I was always like, I don't want to be in that world. But the thing was, what was incredible was because of the work I've been doing for so long. And I didn't do this work because of that. I was just doing the work. When these things happened, I became stronger than I've ever been. I rose up and became somebody that was a patriarch for my family. So instead of crumbling... I became someone that became strong. I was like, no, I'm going to be here for my mom. This is her son. This is her mother. This is my family. These people need me. So rather than me being, woe is me or getting into something, I'm going to rise up. I will be the person you come to, whatever you need. And uh, I think that's why we do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. To show up as best as we can to the world. And there's one last thing, and I want to mention one thing I just think about people, what also happened with me is like this sense of we don't trust that we can be great. 
there's that voice that pushes us like that. I can do everything. And sometimes I don't trust us. And like your example, gives me that, like that inner voice actually says like, you can do so much like oh, yeah. this. Uh, I have a big mission that I'm doing for myself. Like, and I'm like, wow, it scares me. But like, I have this voice that tells me, do it, do it. You can do this. I'm supporting you. And yet it's so easy to dim that because we don't trust sometimes our greatness. And yet I remind everybody listening to that our greatness makes the world better. So showing up to the world as our, in our best capacity, it's not selfish. It's not greedy. Yes, there's elements of that that could be happening. But the point is, if you show up authentically to your purpose, to honoring your inner self, then the world becomes better through yeah. you, through the richness and abundance you bring to the world, through people looking at you, looking at Brett and saying, wow, if he's doing something like that, I can do something like that. So if you're hearing the inner voice and it's quiet, like just dare because it's yeah. there for a reason. Yeah. And two things on that on, you know, like number one, our world is beautiful because we become a global society and we're connected to so many things. But unfortunately, what it does is it creates a lot of stress and it changes our perspective and our expectations of ourselves. A lot of times people look at them like, oh, I want to be like him or be like her. Or I've accomplished this. Let those things go. That is not success. Success is your fulfillment and your peace. It's you doing whatever your path is. Every single person can be successful in their own life of what they want. It's not about trying to make the money or have the thing that person had that's external. When you do that, that does cause stress because that's not your journey. That's not your path. There's enough abundance in the world for everyone. You have to figure out what's right for you. Right. And that's why like, you know, I do these breathwork journeys all the time. I do these events yes. and I do these free online breathwork journeys where I have people show up to it. And for me, it's because I want people to experience what this can be like too. A lot of people are overwhelmed. They're stressed. They've hit that that fight or flight mode and they're living in it where they have anxiety and adrenaline and cortisol in their life. And it doesn't shut off. It's like this anxiety all the time. And it's hard to see and have hope of a better world, but there are tools where you can do things and they rapidly change this, like this breath work journey stuff. You do it. Yeah. I, every single person that does that, I've done hundreds and maybe six, seven, 800 people have done it now with me. They'll wow. do this and they'll go, I cannot, I've had people that are vets. They've gone through PTSD. They've been in wars. I have doctors that have been helping people that are neuroscientists. I've had people to do psychedelic therapy and they're like, nothing has ever been more powerful than this experience. I didn't realize it with my breath. I would do this. Like I've had people that said, I haven't cried in five years since my mother passed away. I haven't, I've been numb. And it's, it shows you, holy cow, I'm so much more powerful than I thought I was. It breaks through those walls, and those barriers that are holding you down in that pain. And all of a sudden you go, I feel like a different person. Now that this is gone, that wall is gone. I'm inspired. There's something inside me that came to life that was trapped, that wants something, that wants more, that believes I have that greatness. And man, that's there's nothing better in the world to me than that. And can you elaborate a little bit more just like where those events are, how to check them out? I'll do the links below, but what's happening okay. also? Cool. So one thing is, you know, so you're going to have the links. If anybody goes to my website, you can just look up on my tabs, the menu tabs, and it says breathwork. There's breathwork journeys and breathwork sessions. So that's where you find this stuff. You can find those always on my website, any of my social media, there's links everywhere. I try to make it very easy for people to find that. Um, and beyond that, I'm very passionate about, I've been doing these retreats. I have a division in my company called Action Mastery. Yeah. And under that, I have all these different retreats and stuff that I do. And I do these one day immersive retreats now called Breath House. They're so powerful. I have so much passion for this. It's everything that I've been doing comes to this because it's the easiest doorway for people to have, number one, a beautiful experience, great community, so much fun, but also do a lot of powerful work that will help you transform and break through. And so I do them here in Vegas locally right now, but I'm going to be touring all over the U.S. and doing them soon. So you can go again, go to my website and you'll mm -hmm. see a thing just says Breath House. If you look for the website for it, there's a website, it's just breath-house.com. But um, it's a one day immersive experience where we do group coaching, group coping, uh, group exercises. We do Kundalini or some type of body work, yoga, you know, breath work, sorry, body work. Then we do a sound bath, uh, which is great healing and frequency. Again, something that heals your body without you even having to think about it. It's like, you know, people do chemotherapy to, to get cancer. A lot of that, that's radiation, that's vibration. So sound healing is doing the same thing. It's healing you and doing an internal massage. Then we do breath work for an hour. And then my, uh, my partner, Jordan, who's in this with me, uh, Jay Handel, he's an amazing musician. We do like a two hour deep house tribal music, mm -hmm. kind of like dancing celebration. But we have food trucks, smoothies, kava, kombucha, food, and the places are Party. beautiful, beautiful space. And we use these headsets where it's completely immersive. So when you're in it, the sound is just locked in and it takes you on a beautiful internal journey. And so I love this because it's really helping people believe in themselves and advance to the next level when they feel stuck and they feel like, I don't know where I'm going to go. 
I just talked to a client this morning who's going through like a really overwhelmed experience. He's come to the journey tonight because he's at a point where it's so overwhelming. We're going to do stuff through coaching and get him there, but it's going to take time. And I don't want him to have to go through the time of sitting with it. So he'll do this. And tomorrow he will not experience that trauma anymore. Mm. He'll be in a different place. And so anybody that can do it, you know, again, it's free. I welcome you. I challenge you to show up and do that for yourself. I might show up tonight. Also, I'm going to be looking for things that are local in the Seattle area. Just going to plant that seed over here. Come closer. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bunch of clients that have been asking me, so I would love to do one up there. Yeah, I will help. Anything you need in this area. We have a nine acre farm if you need a awesome. place. Oh my gosh. You just, okay. Now you're in trouble. Sincerely, 4,000 square foot for house. You, uh, we have, we'll, we'll get you fresh uh, eggs. Okay. Just, uh, just bribing right there. Just right, uh, online uh, bribery right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love all of this. Again, such valuable resources. Again, I just hear your passion and sincerely for me, it makes me curious. So I'm definitely going to check out. And as somebody who recently started a big mission, I'm feeling the sense of like just wanting to be clear, feel empowered. So all the resources are welcome. Cause like, what's the risk? You know, what else do you have going on right now? You know, trade a show, uh, one hour, hour TV show for this and just see what difference your life can, where your life can go with such yeah. a little tool. Love it. I could talk to you all day, but Same I here. know you probably have other things to do here. <laughs> <laughs> so here at right off track, um, I'll, I'll include all your resources and everything, but we wrap up here with three rapid fire questions. So when you're ready, let me know. All right, let's do it. Love them. Love thinking quick. <laughs> okay. What's a habit you think has contributed to your success the most? Mm. Well, at this point right now, it is as cold plunges. I know it's such a trend thing. Ice bath. I get up and I go into a freezing cold shower every morning at 5, 5.30 or 6 a.m. I get yeah. right out of bed and go in and just brutally do it. Three minutes of freezing cold water. Yesterday, I woke up and it's, <laughs> this is the same we're human. I woke up so yeah. cranky. I don't know why I was so cranky, but I can, I'm aware of myself. I was like, what's going on, Brett? You're being a yeah. real jerk. I was like, get in the shower, froze myself. And I came out screaming, jumping up, pumping, playing music. It was great. So right now, the cold bath, cold plunge, and my daily routine. I'm yeah. sacred. I have a sacred daily routine that I never miss. Can you share more or is it a secret? Yeah, no, I'd love to. Yeah. So my daily routine, I get up first thing in the morning yeah. and I when I do the, the cold plunge. So I get right into like the shower, do two, mm. three minutes freezing cold water. I come and I set my temple here. <laughs> uh, once I dry off, I sit down yeah. in my temple. I observe my breathing and I observe my thinking. So I don't regulate first. I just, where am I? Witness. Then I do some breath work, uh, usually like five to 10 minutes of breath work at least. Then I meditate for 10 minutes. And then I have a process called QP1, quantum mm -hmm. programming that I developed and teach everybody where mm -hmm. I have passions that I've determined in my life that are the five most important things to me. I review them and I really read them and let them sink in because mm -hmm. they're setting the course for my mind and my perspective, the lens that I'm seeing the world through for the day. That I read a list of affirmations of the things I want to be, do, and have my life that I need to become to execute those passions. And then I write a list of gratitudes. I go over the people, the places, the things in my life that I'm most grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, I say prayers, and then I take my dog on a walk and go to the gym and work out. And that is my day putting the mask on me first before mm -hmm. I give to others. Beautiful. And I, I have to say, like, if people are thinking this takes time, I don't have that time. Well, I wonder, like, where are you rushing to? Like, what is, what are you rushing towards? Like, you need to have a, 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 an end point. You need to have a destination. And sometimes we're just doing because life is like pushing us in a way. And like, if you want to be somebody like Brett, it, it shows like what happens when you focus yourself and you take and in, invest that time into yourself. So thank you so much for sharing, like noting it. On you. Like, thank you. Like, you know, talk about rushing. And this is, this is just to tell you about like how you can have yeah. this time. I've got 15 executive clients, three companies I'm running, two events yeah. I'm doing, a training I'm in a 12 person marketing team, an executive assistant. I've got my dog. I've got my family. I've got my life. I work out. I do all these. And I do all myself, except for my yeah. team doing the marketing. And I'm like, I find at the times there. And it's yeah. like, because I'm able to show up as my best. So when I do everything, everything I'm doing, I'm inspired by doing, and I am showing up as my best at it. And so mm -hmm. it's like, you really can do so much more than you think. And this is just, just to have everybody have a healthier, more prosperous life. Yeah. It makes me think like, if you're an investor, how much are you investing in yourself? Yeah. That's a question like we have to ask, like, how much are you investing in yourself? Like not just financially, but time-wise Amen. and how much you invest in yourself is going to, is going to, you know, all the dividends are going to come from that yeah. right now. If you're spending no time, then the dividends are probably aligned to how much investment you're making. So that's mm, kind of challenging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm getting sidetracked. When I'm, I'll reel it back in there. Right, um, right fire again. <laughs> so, one thing I mentioned to you a little bit before is like, I recently feel like it was calling to its mission of empowering 1 billion people to connect more authentically. And to me, the reason is like, I've seen how much my life has changed 
just like people like you, I had no clue what were out there. And yet like these connections just really have changed my life. So in that in mind, like in one sentence, uh, why does the world need more authentic connection? In one sentence, why does the world need more authentic connection? Because it brings us inner peace that will help us create the society we really deserve to live in. Beautiful. Okay. And last but not least, in the positive sense, going off track is. Oh, and the positive sense going off track is being unique, trusting you have your own journey, following your calling, running your race, because nobody is running your race against you, just your past self. Beautiful. But I really appreciate your time. And to all of our listeners, I just want you to think like that peak performance is something that is relevant in your life. Mm-hmm. In your life, there is a state of like aspiration that you can achieve by incorporating these little steps, these activities, these free resources. So if this resonates, if you check out Brett's resources, and if not, just find your own path, right? It's not a one size fit all, but embrace the journey, invest in yourself, and let's make the world better and more connected. And as always, let's take over the world together, right off track with love. Take care. Thank you, Anya. My pleasure. <laughs>